ooze it or lose it. Only shooting stars break the this video and my channel are sponsored by Whatnot. Whatnot is an online marketplace where you can buy and sell cool collectibles including Magic the Gathering cards. So if you're looking to get cards from Murders at Karlov Manor or maybe the upcoming Fallout Commander set, make Whatnot your first stop. If you use my link, which is in the description of the video, you'll also get $15 off your first purchase and you'll be helping support my channel when you use that link. Thank you again to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing Slime Against Humanity with Amori the Collector. This is another ooze deck, but I have an ooze as a commander this time. We're playing Golgari oozes, which means we have access to a bunch of nice self-mill cards to get copies of Slime Against Humanity into our graveyard. And before somebody says, Amy, you only have 26 copies of Slime Against Humanity, that's not nearly enough. No, it's... It's what I found was like the best number of slimes for me. I've been going back and forth, taking out pieces of ramp, adding pieces of removal, doing all sorts of things to try to make the ooze. Ooze. But this is, uh, this is where I've settled so far. And if you're wondering, what do you do with Amori? Well, when Amori is your commander, you can choose to name any card type when you play this, and then you get a discount on that type. Now, something notable is if you had Amori as your companion, you would not be able to have sorceries as the thing you're naming unless you somehow had a sorcery as your commander, which I don't actually think is possible right now. But we're putting a lot of work into getting slimes into our graveyard using Palantir of Orthanc and Mesmeric Orb. We're getting extra counters and are holding our counters from our oozes using the Ozolith, or should I say the Oozolith, and Oozolith the Shattered Spire. And we're playing lots of the good oozes like Biogenic Ooze, Acidic Slime, Gelatinous Cube, Orin Reef Ooze, and everybody's favorite, Scavenging Ooze. Ah, uh, gotta love having an assortment of oozes. Now, if one of those oozes ends up in our graveyard, it also makes slime against humanity stronger. So you can kind of add that into the count of oozes and slimes that are in our deck as we try to get them out. Because I'm in Golgari, I'm also running a couple cards that mill either at the start of our turn, like Death Bonnet's Sprout, or right when they come into play and then at the, ad at the start of turn, or Planeswalkers that put cards in our graveyard. I found that Professor Onyx seemed like a good balance of she can be used as removal. She has this uh, casting sorceries, gets us an extra bit of life, drains our opponent, and her plus ability can put more slimes and oozes into the graveyard while getting more of them into our hand as well. Rask is in this deck as a flexible piece of both removal and proliferate for our oozes. And our final finisher up here is Crater Hoof Behemoth. Listen, I know it's not an ooze. Sometimes you just, you just gotta, you gotta put the hoof. It's a green deck, okay? You put the hoof in the green deck. We also do have a bit of card draw in this deck. Some of it is black card draw, black market connections, where we pay our life to make treasures, card draw, or shapeshifters, which are oozes. They don't count toward anything for the oozes. It's just kind of nice to have this card. And tribute to the world tree, where as long as we've had one other ooze put into our graveyard or slime put into our graveyard, each slime against humanity we cast will draw another card, which gives us the potential to kind of chain these different oozes together, because if you snooze, you lose. And we're gonna take our oozes into the queue. We wanna see how many of them we can get into play. Big trampling oozes, here I come. Petralaza, sun favored. The dino that discovers. All right, we got some turn two ramp here. Windswept Heath for some fixing. I don't really have to worry about counter spells from them. They're a dinosaur deck. I have to worry about ramp and more dinosaurs. The more dinosaurs, the scarier. All right, we're gonna surveil, hoping for a slime on top. Nope, it's a land. I'll keep a land. Yeah, we have uh, one of our ooze typal oozes here, biogenic ooze that'll get counters on all my oozes. <laughs> you think we're gonna get mana tithed? I'm ready. No! They, they, they hit me. Aw. They, they hit me right in the, right in the elf. Pugnacious Hammer Skull, a three mana 6-6 six, six because 
That's a thing. This is gonna seem weird, but I'm naming Artifact. Also thought about naming Planeswalker or Creature. This, by the way, if it attacks in, uh, will remain tapped if they attack in and don't have more dinosaurs. All right, sweet. Biogenic Ooze. All our oozes get counters. And now this is why Braska's in this deck. Got a little bit of proliferate on that plus. See all these plus one, plus one counters? I want more. All right, Pantalazzi, you got five mana. Actually, you have way more than five mana. You have seven mana. Ah, oh, they blasted my ooze. At least we get to bank the plus one, plus one counter. We can also proliferate this while it's on the Ozolith. And because it's another target, it will give us more counters, which is good. Uh, I will pay whoop, a little less here. I could kill the Pugnacious Hammer Skull instead of doing this, or I shouldn't say kill it. I'll turn it into a treasure. But this is better. Um, These twos. Now you can block. I'll get all those counters back on my Uzalith. Absence Pilgrim is what they discovered off Pant Laza's enter the battlefield. Now with poetic ingenuity, they'll make treasures when their dinos attack. Also, if they cast artifact spells, like a lot of these ramp spells, they will get dinos. Oh, they see the writing on the wall. Uh, I was about to pop down a slime against humanity, uh, swing in and kill a blocker. Get a bit of proliferate in on Vraska too. That's gonna be game, GG dinos. Varus, Silvery Moon Ranger. Varus is an elf, or I guess a half elf, and whenever you cast a creature for the first time each turn, you venture into the dungeon. Complete a dungeon, get a dog. Hi, Varus. Start with a little bit of ramp here. The Elvish Mystic. We could go for a turn to Slime Against Humanity, but I think it's going to be better to go for the Seder Wayfinder. Nice. Okay, so we did end up putting those in a graveyard. And I guess I'll play the uh, Lair of the Hydra here. I was going to use Windswept Heath to get the Surveil Land, but this works just fine, and uh, this would come in tapped otherwise. Trepid Outlander. Yep, that's a creature that ventures into the dungeon. Neat. Uh, before playing any slimes or oozes or oozes or slimes, we're going to use Windswept Heath to grab the Surveil Land. We're going to see what we get on top of our deck. It's the one ring. We're going to keep it there. And I will use Slime Against Humanity. It's big enough to block the Intrepid Outlander. So we've got ourselves a 3-3 three, three ooze. I like, uh, we've got some mono green dungeon versus uh, some ooze going on here. We're both clearly very, very serious decks. Not at all silly geese. Not, definitely not. Amori, I will name Sorcery. And I guess I'll swing in with my 3-3. Three, three. I don't think they'd block. We have a decent blocker here in the form of Amori. I wonder which dungeon they'll go through. Typically, when you're trying to complete a dungeon quickly, you go through the Lost Mine of Fandelver. Yep, Lost Mine of Fandelver. Gotta go through the middle route here. That means on the next turn, they could make a goblin, they could get a treasure. Lots of good choices here. A one ring is probably going to be a, a good choice here. I'm actually going to use the Phyrexian Tower to eat the Seder Wayfinder. Get protection. Draw a card. This is me just trying to, like, see if I could get some more oozes in hand. They have one indestructible blocker, but my oozes have trample, so I'm still going to swing in with this. I should say my oozes have trample. The slime against humanity ooze tokens have trample. Amori, no trample. 
Well, that's whack. That's bush whack. Evolving. Adaptive. It has oil! Delicious oil! Oh, and a goblin! Hello, goblini. How are you doing? Your teeth look very sharp today. Please don't bite me. They have yet to complete the first dungeon. This has to attack. I guess we'll walk with the ooze token. If their creatures do make contact with us and do damage to us, which, like, the one ring was preventing that turn. They'll get to draw some cards. Speaking of drawing cards, I would like to draw some cards. Iogenic ooze! Ooh! Uh, I will swing in still with all of these. Actually, I'm gonna leave back this ooze. The, uh, the 3-3. Three -three. Cause I don't want them to double block it with like Intrepid Outland or an Evolving Adaptive or anything. Iogenic ooze in end step. Going to give us a plus one, plus one counter on each ooze I control. I also now have this four mana ability to make more oozes. Great card, by the way. Absolute house and limit. Oh, now I'm not going to get any counters on anything, including the one ring. Uh, okay, Toski has to swing in, so Toski does swing in. I'll lose two. This does not get a counter. We still just draw two. Okay, Acidic Slime, I can destroy a land. I could just make a couple oozes off this. This will come in with half the counters. Ugh, that's rough. I guess I'll destroy a land. Do I want to just make a half slime? I I'm still going to make a half slime. I think that me going wide is still a pretty good idea, because I might be able to overrun them. Especially if I can kill Vorinclex. We're almost done with that first dungeon. I've almost got that Daug. I imagine they have Eliwick in their deck, too. I love Eliwick. She's so cute. I wish her card was better. Aberbrook Caretaker normally puts two plus one plus one counters on another creature. Instead, is going to put four because of Vorinclex. Uh, Aberbrook Caretaker, if it becomes nighttime, is then going to put all the counters on all the creatures. Hey, Toski, uh, I guess I'm big enough to block, so I'll still block here. Okay, we gotta draw something good here. It's just these, these halved slimes. Got this. Um... Just trying to go wide. Trying to ooze my way to victory. And yeah, we don't get any counters. It, it's, it's tough because scales or plus one plus one counters is the main theme with a lot of these cards. At least we're drawing to a turn. And we have a mana sink here with the biogenic ooze. Gracious Hydra, probably going to kill my Biogenic Ooze. That's an 8-9. It could also just, like, double its size and kill me with a big swing. They're fighting the Biogenic Ooze so I can no longer turn out more creatures. Evolving Adaptive, now a 7-7. Seven, seven. So who's getting the four plus one plus one counters? Is it still Toski? It's still Toski. Uh, I am going to block with the two twos here. One ring dealing two damage to me. The slime against humanity is still only going to make a four four. This comes in with half counters. We could do Toski and swing in. We would lose a lot of our attackers. We would draw some cards. Uh, I can go for Professor Onyx and a plus. Let's go for Professor Onyx and the plus. We can't minus because she comes in with too few loyalty. We're going to lose a life. Okay, so we got Slime, Slime, Parallel Lives. We want the Slimes in the graveyard. 
And I could either make one five five, make one indestructible blocker, or set up to double next turn. We're gonna set up for the dubs. Where's the hoof? I believe we milled the hoof at the start of the game. Hoof is in fact in the graveyard. Now that by the way they're going through the dungeon of the mad maze. Madness! Do I have a way to get it out? I do. Uh, Takanuma is in this deck. Takanuma can technically get any creature out of my graveyard. Guys, that's fine as long as we keep it daytime. Uh, we're we're fine. It's just it's just one twelve thirteen with trample. I have a death toucher. It's fine. I'm going to pop this in front of this, use in front of those, and a uh, five six and a f five six and a four four here, since they'll almost certainly kill Amori. Hope that works out. So I mean, they have no tricks, which they totally might. I don't think they were attacking anything at Onyx. We're down to five life. We're going to lose two off one ring. We've gotten rid of their trampler, so that's good at least. Uh, this will also lose a life for me, which is kind of disastrous. Because <laughs> it means the one ring would kill me at the start of next turn. It's fine, guys. It's fine. Uh, please sacrifice a non-token creature. Thank you. All right. There we go. Magecraft is keeping me alive. I just wanted to make sure I did it first. I think the outlander is probably gone or something. What did I drop? Okay. Renegade. We're going to lose the life. Uh, turn 10 bird symbiosis. Sure. That is actually discounted by Amori. Um, I have impeccable study habits. Slime. I guess we'll, we can roll the bones and see what we get off this. I could also play Toski. All right, we got Scavenging Ooze and Oran Reef Ooze. Uh, Oran Reef Ooze is really great. Uh, we will use it to put a counter on nothing because Oran Clex is out. We're just trying to maintain lots of good blockers. Ah, but what is a blocker to a Nissa? This is going to minus seven and end the game because they're, they have six for us, and this gives trample. Well, they hoofed before we could because the Darts was in the graveyard, but I think we did our a pretty good job holding out against a mono green deck. It was really this Vorinclex is what hosed us. I think we would have won. By the way, she also came in with double loyalty. I think we would have won if, the, if not... For you, you pesky Vorinclex. <laughs> Let's just take a slightly excess amount of damage. GG, Varus, Silvery Moon Ranger. A fine, negative 84. A good life total to end that. Azusa, lost, but seeking. Azusa puts lots of lands into play. They also go first, and they probably love turn one ramp, playing her on turn two, and then immediately getting stuff out. Oh, no, no turn one ramp. I have turn one ramp. It doesn't do that much. It lets me play a slime against humanity. But it does get me to Amore faster, which I do like. Typically, this big green deck just, it's, it's trying to ramp, 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 get some landfall stuff, play lands off the top of the deck, and then eventually big creatures. Wow, the top four cards of their deck were all lands. That's, that's pretty terrifying. I'm gonna discount sorceries for my slime against humanity. I'll, I'll swing in for two. They're about to have eight lands, maybe more. Uh huh. Didn't play anything? Awful sus. Use this windswept heath. 
Shuffled the top of my deck. We're looking for land on top. Maybe their hand is literally just playing the things that get lands. Or maybe it's a 10 drop. Could be an Ulamog, could be an Emrakul, could be something absolutely massive. Girl, what are you doing with all these lands? D drawing a card. I mean, it can block. Draw them a card. Swing in with everything more safely here. We're down to eight. We get plus one, plus one counters on each of our oozes. Uh, Janik ooze, by the way, also came with a free ooze. Ruse! Girl, what are you doing with all these lands? I get that, like, a Zuzu deck should be half lands. But this seems a little excessive. GG! Uh, th the Azusa deck never drew its threats. Good for us! Jaxus, the troublemaker. Jaxus makes copies of creatures, so it's a great with red enter the battlefield or on death triggers or just being aggressive and cloning things Jaxus does cost four mana but you can blitz her and you're technically making like blitz copies of the things that you're cloning this is kind of like a very 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 balanced kiki tiki very very slowed down plain and simple kind of nice you can even intentionally kill things with a legend rule to it we're going to start with our surveil land here. Yes, and we surveilled a slime on turn one. That is exactly what I want to be doing. Turn two, we got an ooze. It's a turn twos, see? Boom, scavenging ooze. And it got stepped on. No, oh, dude, now your butt's gonna be covered in... What's gonna get covered in ooze? Man, that's nasty. Reckless Stormseeker can give itself haste, swings in for three, ba bam and giving Jax's haste is also pretty big if you're not uh, blitzing her. Behold! Slime! Since they stepped on my ooze, they actually added to my slime and ooze count. And now I have a 4-4. Four, four. And 4-4s four, die to Chandra's minus 3 ability. I don't have to be so rude to my oozes. Making a 5-5 five, five versus getting down a Mori. Possibly going wild next turn. Or even a Mesmeric Orb. Let's just go for a Mori. Uh, I'm actually going to just uh, sorcery, as we always do. There's some, by the way, like, you might name Planeswalker if you're just, like, one mana away from it. But our whole deck is about the slimes. And if we can double slime next turn, that's great. But I, I kind of want to do doubling season first. Because doubling season isn't just going to make twice the ooze, it's going to make them twice as tall. So, 10-10 and 11-11. Or sorry, 12-12. I totally know that 6 times 2 is 12. I went to the Good Brain Academy for smart slots. Mm-hmm. Monkey! 2 damage! What the heck? Do I let the monkey hit? Let the monkey hit. Thanks. Uh, they used uh, Wolfram Alpha in my chat just to double check and make sure, just to, just to make absolutely sure that six times two was 12. All right, so I'm swinging in with Amori here. I don't think they'll trade. And I'm going to actually sacrifice an ooze, I think, for that. No, I'm going to leave them back. Their deck's too aggressive, even though I would love to just mill myself here. To the Lernatorium. Hi, Jaxus. Jaxus can double Terror of the Peaks, which is very scary. 
especially because they will have enough mana to then play Bone Crusher Giant and deal eight damage to whatever target they please. Like my face. Terror of the Peaks becomes two of the Peaks. Two Terrors of the Peakses. They can give one of them a buff, and that's lethal. GG Jaxus. Gosh, you make me miss playing my Jaxus deck. Nice. Good game. The Ancient One. This gigantic creature can't attack or block until their graveyard is full of permanents. But it gives them a way to fill their graveyard with permanents. That's kind of like our deck. It's going to be doing a bunch of self-mill, but might also be using some trickier cards that are just blue mill spells to get what they need. Uh, we got lucky there with our turn one surveil land, getting a slime against humanity. By the way, the descend cards don't work well in this deck because these are not permanents. These are sorceries. There's spelly smells. Parallel lives, Amori, gelatinous cube. That's four mana to activate your ability. Let's go for parallel lives. Twice the slime, twice the fun. Oh, I guess I could have uh, brought in a land untapped and used it with the loam speaker. For three mana, we got two three threes. That's not a bad rate. Thank you, Parallel Lives. You make my deck seem slightly saner. The Ancient One. A draw? This card, Teresian Mindbreaker. Okay, so this is going to mill us if it gets to attack, which is actually good because we want to be milled. All right, they're swinging for eight. We take it. They could have something like a Fraying Sanity or uh, just anything else that doubles the number of cards milled. That would be pretty dangerous for us. Um, I might want to go for the Gelatinous Cube, but I know what I want to do. I want to use my commander for more slime. Sorry about the noises. I was putting some information about the finest format brawl in my channel. Everybody has to know about brawl. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bringing out the mind breaker. Graveyard shifter. Actually bringing out shouldered whispering one. I'll double block the ancient one. Bring back my beloved Amori. And then sacrifice an ooze. I'm going to use the gelatinous cube, which is an ooze, to put Shuldred in jail. So she can't reanimate. Dealing seven damage. I'm a little scared of, like, a uh, board bounce. Cyclonic Rift and River's Rebuke are absolutely devastating to us, by the way, because they just undo these poor tokens. And there's no way in these colors to prevent it. We can't phase out. Oh, cool wall. You should mill me. Please mill me. What's that? Cityscape leveler. Nice. Um, They have five life, though. We can sacrifice our smallest creature. And before you say, isn't that your smallest creature? No, because we can use Llanowar Loam Speaker to animate one of our lands. And they're drowning my slime. I'm still swinging with everything. It should be lethal. Nice. We've taken out the ancient one. 
GG. Ziatora, the incinerator. Ziatora yeets creatures at things to deal damage equal to their power and also gets three treasures. I like this hand because it has an assortment of orbs in it. Uh, I've got a turn two orb, got turn three orb. We could even go faster using these two little mana accelerants here. Blinded Halfling. <laughs> it can make my Palantir uncounterable. We want this, by the way, like as soon as possible because it's going to both give us card advantage and mill, kind of depending on how our opponent feels. Usually they will mill the first two times and then it will get us a card draw each turn. A scry and a card draw. Really nice. I, I think people should put this in more decks. It's probably a little bit too like slow and dirtily for a lot of paper decks. But in Arena, I think it's great, especially if you're running a lot of like big high cost creatures as part of your deck. All right, Palantir of Orthanc coming out. Um, it, by the way, it is fine if we mill and ooze. That still counts toward the slime against humanity. Behold the orb. They're cultivating, they're ramping. Zeta oh man, this altar's awesome looking. She's so cool. Ramp, ramp, ooze, ooze. Zaytoro, Zaytoro is a total babe. Total babe. Uh, these is oozes. Please mail them. Yes, that's two more oozes. We're gonna have four things untapping. Four more potential oozes in the graveyard. Probably not gonna be four oozes. Our deck is only like one third ooze slash slime. Ooh, hey, Ms. Lannery. Captain Storm swings in and makes treasures. Probably going to have some other tre treasure synergies in Zeatora too, since she makes those treasures on sacrifice. Oh, I just noticed. If they put the Basilisk Caller on Zeatora, then any damage dealt from her fling effect does give uh, the Light Flank and Death Touch. This is a good number of oozes. Be old. The Oozalith and Seder Wayfinder. Um, I think they'll let us draw here. Oh, nope, oh, they're milling. Wow, no fear. They're all, they, by the way, they're also down to 10. I they got some uh, funky reanimation they can use here. I see another fling. I see a Chatterfang, Shouldred. Yes, my deck is one third ooze by volume. Yes, it's the Oozalith. Ziatora does not quite have enough mana to come down and equip, even with Lannery's treasure. Key to the archive, though, they can get two more mana and a spell from the spell book. Maybe one that destroys the orbs? You tell me this deck is a 90s Nickelodeon show? Absolutely. This is a double dare physical challenge where at the end you do get slimed. It's amazing how good orbs are with slimes. What am I pondering? Ooze. They know it's over. Good job, oozes. Ah, looks like somebody is a purveyor of crime with Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. Um, we have some really awkward mana here. I'm going to go for an extra mulligan. We're going to throw Slime Against Humanity back. And hopefully we're going to get a land off our Seer Wayfinder and put lots of good oozes into the graveyard. Gaunti, when it enters the battlefield, will be exiling cards from the top of my deck. So they can play them. They'll get to C4 and choose one. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we milled triple slime, which is awesome. We did not get a land, but we did draw a land. So I will be able to play a slime against humanity for five next turn, which this is great. And we do another land here. Hello, it's prime time for slime time. Rex Arena draws them cards. 
Gaunti, by the way, if they exile a slime against humanity face down, it does not count towards our count. However, if they exile one and then cast it, it goes to our graveyard and then it does count. They killed my ooze. Okay, Oracle of Multaya, help me. Okay, extra lands, let's go. Drawing cards, losing life. I imagine there's going to be a lot of mono black good stuff here. Kill cards, shoal dreads. Planeswalkers, board wipes, very meaty, very hooky, very massacred. Slime against humanity! And excuse. No excuses. Only oozes. Ah, a heartless act ain't so good against the news. By the way, their commander does have death touch, so if they play it, they would be trading. And just the trample damage to go over. No, Onyx! Why would you betray me like this and kill my ooze? <sighs> no, wait. They want three. None of those. Hi, Gonti. Gonti does a crime. By the way, I think this might actually be bugged in Arena. If they do hit a slime against humanity, I believe it shows it reflected on this count. It is not supposed to, but somebody did mention that as a bug to me um, a few days ago. Who's Mori? When a slime hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's Mori. Naming sorcery and playing a slime against humanity. Got ourselves a fancy little 8-8 eight eight this time. Using demolition field to destroy my lair of the Hydra. No covered swamp. Very nice. We sacrifice Amori. Move it back into our command zone. Hey, uh, it's removal. Okay. I have no removal. One, two, three, four, five. This is an ochre jelly. It has trample. Ward 2. By the way, in paper, it does not have ward 2. That is a, a digital only change to this card. But otherwise, it is the same. When it dies, it will split into two round and down oozes. Uh, ochre jelly, by the way, is fantastic if you have scales effects like Arden Scales, Ozolith. Um, all of those work really, really well with ochre jelly. Do we have any removal? They made me discard my my removal. So by the way, they're like swimming in card advantage here between stealing cards from me and their Phyrexian arena. But they do also only have eight life left. And so we swing. Two damage bleeds through. We're gonna get that delayed trigger at the end of turn. More oozes. At this point, it doesn't really matter what we name since we can play anything in our deck. This is, I'd say, actually an argument to be made to name Creature, just in case we get Crater Hoof Behemoth. Because that is the most expensive card in our deck. Everything else costs seven or less. Dante, please. Dante, you would not... Would not hurt an ooze, would you? Orb. Is that my orb? Um, I'll lose life. Neat. 
<gasps> this is looking good. So they have to block Amore here, because otherwise the Phyrexian Arena will kill them. Slime against humanity. Will you save me? Will you save me? With the final 10-10 slime! They push the slime. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a bonus Tuesday stream. How do you push a slime? It just falls over and jiggles a little bit. I hope they have no way to gain life. To the top. Draw a card. You already have too many cards in hand. They'll just have to discard. Okay. I'll name, um, sorcery. One life remains. Please don't have a way to gain life. No! Gary! We were so close! Can they win this turn? Yes! They can! Gary! You rude, you rude! So we either die to Shouldred, or we die to the orb, and I- I'm choosing to die to the orb. Here's killing the vibe. We're gonna lose life! That's 12, that's fine. GG. Sorry, our opponent is playing Unctus, Grand Metatect. Uh, Unctus is good with blue artifact creatures. Gives you abilities based on the blueness and the artifactiness of your creatures. And can turn things into blue artifact creatures. Would y'all look at that? Just kind of all comes together into one beautiful package. Full of blue artifact creatures. Gets you loot. Pretty nice. Buffs them up. Probably going to be a good number of just other good instants in blue, since you can be well supported with just mono blue artifacts, but I would say in arena, you're gonna have some other good blue stuff too. All right, Fairy Mastermind, going to watch me mill. See, what did we mill from them? Siren Storm Tamer and Tireless Angler. So I'm, my guess is these are just things that they would want. This gets them card advantage, sort of. This helps protect them. This can get them more card advantage if I'm drawing cards. I don't have that much card draw in my deck. By nature of being a Golgari deck. Oh, Ominous Seas. Oh, so they're looking to draw a ton of cards off of this loot ability. Sounds good to me. All right. Mill ooze. Mill, mill slime. Sli yes. All right. We mill the slime. That's great for us. All right. Behold. Slime against humanity. This is 3 3. This deck is a slime against humanity. Please somebody stop it. It's great when you play the one ring in this deck and you're just like, yes! Don't don't ask how the ring got on the slime. I dropped it. Oh gosh. Green Four Fist says I should make sure to do a Chicago handshake while I'm at MagicCon Chicago, which is old Milwaukee with Malort. That's a crime against humanity. Oh my god, why would you do that to yourself? Um, Unctus? Maybe they realize they don't have double blue right now. Well, they, okay, they have exactly two blue. But right now that Nykthos was not letting them play Unctus. <laughs> Oh, 
we nailed one slime! Yay! Get down my Mori. We're gonna name Sorcery. We actually have, like, a very special sorcery in our hand. The Casualties of War. Notably, their commander is an artifact feature, so we might be able to get uh, not the full slew of casualties, but artifact feature, uh, enchantment, and land. No Planeswalker, if they play Ugg this. Artifact features enchant- I know! Is it time to play Unctus? By the way, it will also be able to just kill another creature here, too. We milled an orb. I, I saw we milled our orb. Yes, we milled one of, one of our other orbs. There's two orbs in a deck. One's in play and one's in, well, one's in the graveyard. It's sad, though, because, like, I'd love to just spit out a bunch of slime. But it's probably better to do the casualties of war if they leave open uh, no blue mana. You're frothing at this casualties of war? Five mana casualties. Red hot pancakes. What you got? If they leave open blue mana, by the way, we just start spitting out slime. Because if one gets countered, great. It just makes the other ones bigger. Oh gosh, but what if I mill just like so many slimes? Are they going to pay a blue to uh, turn one of these into an artifact? No, they're going to tap a Mori. Okay. Mori doesn't need to attack. Paying two life to turn a Fairy Mastermind into an artifact. And the Shacklegeist into an artifact. So we get hit for six. They get to draw and discard. Ominous Seas grows ever closer to making a Kraken. Uh, but I think we're going to crack their deck open before that can happen. Mmm, tapping out. No counter spells. Now, like, they could pay... Five. Let's see. Okay, no slime. No slime. Okay, there's one slime. We drew one. Alright. Now we're we're just we're gonna go for the casualties. Next turn. Choose to ooze. Alright, uh artifact. Creature enchantment lands. How many slime against humanity are in the sec? I wanna say twenty-seven? It might be all the way down to 25 now. And then like an additional nine ooze type things. Not enough. Oh my God, hi Glop. I just realized that you were the one who was frothing at our casualties, at our so cash. Yeah, we, we've set them back a little bit. And just by virtue of like these old, just being single cheap sorceries, we can play a lot. Yeah, it's apparently a, a approximately a one in four chance that we hit a slime against humanity, but a one in three that we hit news. Oh. They're discounting creatures using a surgical metamorph. Neat. Okay. Please, please. All oozes. All oozes. There's one. Bro, seriously? One? Ever have a deck that's just like so cringe? <laughs> Wait, Glob, you just hit Mythic? Are you playing Arena now? Let me know if you're streaming ever. Oh, I should actually just make sure I have you on my little sideboard thingy. Maybe. Nice. Yeah, for any uh, Legends of Runeterra streamers who are, like, trying to move over to magic because, well, Legends of Runeterra is having a time. Um, <laughs> it's having a time. Uh, I am happy to happy to tell people to go check them out. I trust y'all. Y'all play a good card game. Trust y'all to play another good card game. You've been playing Minsk and Boo and Timeless. Minsk and Boo is such a good card. Especially in its original form as a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, I'm tapping this land to try and put more oozes in my graveyard. Oh, we don't talk about artifacts here. Artifacts not real and it can't hurt us. Any oozes? Any, any... There's one! Uh, slime against humanity? Got murdered at Riot Manor. Oh no! Anyway, ooze. 
Hi, Malcolm. He's a good bird. This is a good bird. Playing some Shadow Heart, too. Oh, so you're just like out here playing a Baldur's Gate deck and just owning noobs. Just like, hey, guess what I've got? You got show and tell? I'll show and tell you about my waifu, Shadow Heart. She deals one damage to each of us in our end step. Trying to remember if. Oh, hey, we won. I'm trying to remember if Shadow Heart works with Painlands and Shocklands and um. What are they called? The uh, Fetchlands. If she does, I could totally see that working and timeless, being very funny. All right, nice. We beat Unctus. Sidisi Brood Tyrant. Sidisi, whenever a creature is put into their graveyard. We'll make a zombie. Well, directly from their deck. Still pretty good. Uh, I'm going to keep this. They're saying hello. Hi. I'm going to play this Death Bonnet Spout Sprout on turn one. It's going to mill me each turn, and hopefully it'll mill lots of slimes and oozes and not everything else in my deck. Death Bonnet Sprout sometimes betrays you. But it is a turn one engine to set up for some mill just for me. I do have to be careful about anything that's symmetrically milling against the CDC, in this case, Mesmeric Orb. Because Mesmeric Orb can go kind of crazy with CDC because each untap is a separate trigger. Using that flooded strand. They already got their uh, surveil off the first one. First, uh, first land. Nice. Shigeki! Hi, Shigeki. Slime? Yes! Mill the slime. I'm just going to show them that I mean them no harm. With a surveil. Uh, I can either draw it or I can surveil it. I'll just put it in the graveyard. Since next turn, I've got three drops to cast like Orin Reef Ooze. This Orin Reef Ooze, by the way, if you're wondering what was changed for digital only, uh, it puts additional counters on anything with counters on them when it attacks and it doesn't just uh, include other attacking creatures. Yes, nice, mill the slime. We are doing so good at milling slimes right now. Let's see if this gets countered. Nope, okay, good. Hopefully they're just putting uh, critters in the grave. That is a creature with delve. Honey? I mean, yeah, no, this totally makes sense in CDC. I've just never seen this creature before. Probably because I don't play much with Tarkir cards. All right, what else got put in the graveyard? Uh, some reanimation and some lands. Let's see if CDC just comes down here. Shaman, not Naga. <gasps> Roaming Throne! So what's awesome about Roaming Throne with Sidisi is it doubles these triggers separately. It'll enter the battlefield and mill two separate times, and then when it mills, if it happens to hit something, bam, there you go. Um, am I feeling angular? Parallel lives. I am. And I do not think they'll trade. I don't know if they're going to uh, use this on this. That's, that's like what I'm afraid of with this play, but it's fine. See, they see. Did hit a creature. Oh, just orbs. Throne is not in this deck because it's not an ooze when it's in the graveyard. Okay, yep, that's fair. Figured it was worth a try. Going to trade your Sidisi for my ooze. 
No, that's fair, okay. I know, I, I wish that Roaming Throne could fit into this deck somehow, but it doesn't let you name two things because it's not a when it enters the battlefield, it's an as it enters the battlefield. It works with this ooze and it works with biogenic ooze, but that's really it. All right, Sidisi's coming in. Sir Conrad might be going nuts on triggers here. No creatures meld. Three creatures, no, two creatures meld. That means two zombies, two damage from Sir Conrad, and now another damage from Sir Conrad. Doesn't block him, Sidisi, with a douge. I love Death Bonnet Sprout's just been sitting here like, more stuff in the graveyard? Oh boy. Um, I choose twos. Good triple block with zombies, maybe? Yeah. I think I got plenty of value out of Orin Reef Ooze. This is also going to trigger Sir Conrad, because creatures are dying. Dying, screaming, clawing their way out of the graveyard. Ow, oof, ow, owie. Sir Conrad is so cool. This is like an uncommon that I opened as a, um... I opened as a pre-release card. It wasn't like my pre-release rare, but like in my pre-release for Eldraine. And it made me so happy that I was like, oh boy, I wonder if I can build a deck around this. And then I was like, I do not have good cards to build around Sir Conrad. But the dream remains alive. Wow, Ancient One, you are... You are very much able to attack and block, huh? You are an 8-8 for 2 mana, and we love that for you. One more creature in the graveyard, and Despot of Sprout is flipping. Mill Ooze. <sighs> Not Black Market Connections, I would have rather drawn that. Um, I am just going to fire off Castle Lock Twain. Playing Amori is like, eh, it's a 4-5, who cares? This is an 8-8. Don't have lethal yet off my swarm of oozes. We milled Braska earlier, right? No, we haven't. Okay. I was wondering if any of our uh, proliferate pieces were still in the deck. All right. They hit. Oh, no. And they hit again. Ah. Uh, I'm down to eight. So DC's going nuts. Oh, look, a creature. Ah, creature. Just the lady I was looking for. Look at that. Okay. Hmm. Probably go for the maximum stuff on the battlefield. So we're going to go Amore. We're going to name Planeswalker. I'm going to pay two life. It's going to hurt a lot. We're going to probably die this turn. Hi, Braska! Let's keep it. Okay, so if I proliferate an attack in, they have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 24. We do not have lethal. So I'm turning Sir Conrad into a treasure. Gosh, I, I think we, we, we lose either way. He, he will always be a treasure. Yeah, the amount that they could block, even with us Sir having Conrad tons of trample, wasn't quite enough. Trixie. Oh, and it's Sola. Thank you for the 32 month resub. Yeah, it's like I, I wanted to build him as a commander so bad when I got him in that pre release. I just couldn't figure out the way to do it. <gasps> they used up their Conrad treasure. Also, they have lethal. Step one, reality chef. Step two, profit. I like forever young with him. I want to be forever young. And they want to blossom with a tort.
Yeah, Forever Young was uh, also in the original Eldrain set and worked so good with him in Limited. It's fine, it's just a few of you. It's just a few. Just like... Just a few. <laughs> Here, we'll uh we'll block as we can but it is one more than lethal i give that a solid we tried good game cdc good game glad we got to play with each other Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you liked choosing the oozes with Amori the Collector. As far as our various Slime Against Humanity decks go, I really like that Amori itself is an ooze, which leans a lot more into the ooze theme of this card, since it does count oozes and slimes. This can be very fun. It's definitely not a super high-powered deck, but you get to play ooze typeful. And what's more fun than having a little bit of slime? We got we got some real 90s Nickelodeon vibes in this deck. Uh, compared to the other Ooze decks we have, uh, looking at Falco Spara, Tamio, Aluna, Omnath, things like that, I think this one is the most pure Ooze, and I really love that about this deck. If you're looking for it, by the way, the deck list is in the description of the video, and if there is a commander you would like to see me brew or update, please let me know. Uh, in the comment section. I take note of what you guys tell me you'd like to see, and I write them down, and then I have my chat, twitch.tv slash Amazonian, by the way, vote on which one we brew. Some of the ones that I'm hoping to get to soon include Tovalar, getting an update on that, Yuri, a bit of sacrifice, maybe Yan Yansen, Tesa, the Goshen Tai, Inga and Essica, Lonus, Koth, Nashi, Aurelia, Samut, other Samut, Ashnod. I have like over different commanders listed on here but it's real fun to have lots of good suggestions so i have lots of different decks to pick from thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day